What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB, and more specifically, an episode of Let's Talk Dynasty and our Dynasty Trade Review Show. If this is your first time watching this show, we do take all of these trades straight out of our Discord, so if you are not in our Discord, it is free to join. All of these trades you are going to see on the screen today are from that Discord, so make sure you go join that Discord. Like I said, free to join, so there is no risk in doing that. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's episode, and let's start talking some Dynasty Trades. Or how we doing today? We good, man. We good. We're ready to get these dynasty trades going. Ready to get rocking and rolling. Hell yeah, man. We we just uh, you know the snow we saw in that Pittsburgh game that or it was the Pittsburgh Cleveland game last night. That's yeah. That's come over to us now. I'm getting it today. We're getting all that snow today, and so that's why I'm I'm bundled up, beanie up, hoodie on, sweatpants on. I'm chilling. I, I hate the snow, but uh, I do not hate dynasty trades. So we will hop into those, and uh, we have the first trade on the screen right now. This is going to be a 12 team super flex full ppr and a start 10 league uh team number one says he is rebuilding so he gets jj mccarthy from the minnesota vikings and a 2025 first also he gets a 2026 fifth round pick thrown in there uh for jordan love so i have to ask you you know rebuilding roster are you moving off of jordan love for something like this or is this not enough compensation back from the jordan love side i mean i don't mind it i don't mind it i mean you're if, it, if he's rebuilding we don't know um is it year one of a rebuild did he specify that or he didn't he didn't specify he just said that he's rebuilding now so i assume that you know he's decided that at his trade deadline or before his trade deadline he wanted to tear it down um so this is kind of what he's doing oh, now okay i'm assuming that it's year one so if that's the case i don't mind it um especially if the team's not going to be competitive in this upcoming season you know might as well get the first uh the first round pick in addition to the potential of jj mccarthy i know jordan love is, is young himself basically but um, he's probably going to be looking to tank a little bit next season too, so you get another high draft pick. So he might as well move off of Jordan Love and get that additional first. Yeah, it's interesting, man, because Jordan Love, we still feel like he's young because he's only been a starter in this league for what two years now, three years now, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think two years now, something like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, like he was drafted in the same class as Joe Burrow, you know, drafted in the same class as Justin Herbert, and those guys have been starters and for a long time now. So. So we've we've yeah. waited a while for Jordan Love, but uh, he's he's still fairly fresh, I guess, as a starting quarterback in the NFL. For me, you know, you get the youth in JJ McCarthy. Like people, I think people forget, man. JJ McCarthy was the youngest quarterback prospect in the class this year, and it wasn't even primarily close like he is a very very young kid man like 22 years old uh, I think that he's 22 years old but this is a guy who is like I mean you see the baby face on him he, he's a young cat man and so I, I think people forget how young he is and you get that youth and that fresh I guess those fresh years that you're just buying back with JJ McCarthy now obviously there's a lot of risk in doing a move like this because that 2025 first you got to hit on that first round pick and JJ McCarthy has to hit as a quarterback for you to be happy uh, with the compensation because I think we can confidently say Say that Jordan Love now is a hit. We know that Jordan Love is a good quarterback. He's probably going to be the starting quarterback of this Green Bay Packers team for a long time. That's not changing. Uh, I think the upside, though, is with a guy like J.J. McCarthy because you see what Sam Darnold is doing this year. Borderline QB1 numbers. And J.J. McCarthy is, at least I test-wise, much more talented than a guy like Sam Darnold. You get the first round pick thrown in, you get J.J. McCarthy, uh, I mean, uh, Justin Jefferson, the other J.J., not J.J. McCarthy, Justin Jefferson, uh, locked in for a long time. Jordan Addison's still going to be there for a while. T.J. Hawkinson, new contract, going to be there for a while. Christian Derrissaw, bookend left tackle. Brian O'Neill, bookend right tackle. I mean, great offensive play caller and Kevin O'Connell. Everything is here for J.J. McCarthy to succeed. And <laughs> you're shaking your head as the Chicago Bears fan as I'm I'm bragging about everything we got locked down. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening to you, looking at J.J.'s picture, looking at your background. It's just like <laughs> fair enough. But uh, I I think there's a lot of risk. But if you're gonna tear down a roster and you're gonna you're gonna rebuild for me you know one of the things that i like to do is try and get multiple assets um i've talked about in rebuilds where i like to take the uh quantity over quality approach and i don't think that the, this is a bad quality player in jj mccarthy he's still a guy that i think we were all drafting top six in rookie drafts last year top seven in rookie drafts last year uh first round draft capital all of the good things that we talked about this just makes sense to me man i, I don't think anybody loses if you're the guy selling mccarthy and a, and a first and you want to contend i mean obviously jordan love is a piece that can help you contend right now he's also young guy so you can you know use him for a while i don't think anybody loses this deal but um with the context knowing that team one is trying to rebuild 
I like the idea. I like the idea. And this is uh, one of those moves that I think I would, this is a move that I would probably personally make in my own leagues if I had the opportunity. And I get it. I, I got the purple tinted lenses on. So uh, maybe you can throw a little bit of context there. That's not a Vikings fan. I mean, it also helps that Jordan Love is, is sliding a little bit, just a tiny fraction bit, fraction. He's, 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 sl- he's sliding a little bit since his performance last season. He's kind of become somewhat of a turnover machine. So I think he's second right now in the NFL in turnovers. So, I mean, this that that even makes this trade seems even more legit, but I think both sides come out okay here. Yeah, I'm not mad at it at all. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next trade that I have here is from AMR. Uh, he receives Amonara St. Brown. He trades away Devonta Smith, Brian Robinson, and a 2025 second. He says this is a 12-team super flex, full PPR, an extra point for the tight end premium. He says he is a contender uh, being team one there. I mean, which side are you taking? Vanessa, Vanessa. That's what I'm going to say every time. I feel like it's a landslide of a trade. And AMR, you didn't finesse that boy. Why you do him like that? Why you pull up and do him dirty like that? Yeah, we like Devonta Smith. We like him. We like him. We don't love him. We love Amon Ross St. Brown. Brian Robinson, you know, he's a he's a running back. I, mean, I don't want to see running back. It's, but, I mean, he's a running back. I mean, so you could probably get one of those in this upcoming draft. You know, so in the trailer way a second, this is a landslide of a deal to me. I'm taking the AMR side. He finessed him, and he caught him looking. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, B-Rob's just a guy, right? Like, he's just a guy. Um, that's really the best way to describe him. He's fine for now. I mean, if you if you feel like you're rebuilding, and I think that might maybe be what this is, is maybe coolest kid Kyle is a rebuilding roster, and he's like, maybe I can just break Amon Ra down into a couple pieces. Maybe that's what it is, because typically at this time of the year, when you get those contenders, they are buying from the rebuilders, right? Like, we just make good, good trade partners. So I'm thinking maybe that's what it is. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to sit here and defend that he got a good, a good uh, haul for what Amon Ra St. Brown should receive. I mean, I think if you're trading away Amon Ross St. Brown, you know, people were talking about earlier in the year. I remember there was a little bit of worry. People were like, Jamison Williams is getting more targets and blah, 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 blah. He's going to keep Ross getting St. hurt, keep going to jail, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> why? Amon Ross St. Brown is as elite as they come. I mean, there's a reason why they paid him those buku bucks this offseason, right? They gave him one of the biggest contracts in the NFL, the wide receiver position. They love this kid, man. They love him. He's, he's a cornerstone receiver he's not even old bro like he's not even old at this point like we talk about these guys when they get 28 29 30 you know and it's like okay maybe we should start moving on from the elite wide receiver you got three more years probably with Amon Ra maybe even more than that where I feel confident as him being an elite wide receiver for us in dynasty um I just can't really come up with many scenarios where I'm going to be moving a piece like that unless I'm being overpaid for that contender to come and get my Amon Ross St. Brown and I don't feel like this is an overpay point blank period so uh, I'm just going to take AMR side quite easily uh this is one of those ones where I feel like you throw them in the in the uh discord and you say hey i just made this trade but in the back of your mind you're like hey y'all i'm trying to brag because look at how much i just finessed this mother effer yeah man I, yeah i can't see it if i'm making this trade or you making this trade we getting the least devonta and we getting like two first in return we're not getting brian robinson in the second like because sometimes you just gotta go look sometimes you just gotta go to the trade table and say this one i'm gonna get or i'm not trading them it's not like i'm on raw it's like a 30 year old wide receiver so it's like look either give me two first in this player or i'm keeping them you want them go pay for them and i don't feel like he did that or either that or he or or either that or he really really likes devonta he really really likes brian robinson so yeah and again you know if you're a rebuilder you probably should not be real uh rebuilding around running backs like brian robinson because no 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 no, those guys can get replaced quite easily um, and I, yes. I received a lot of a lot of pushback in one of my videos uh, a while back because I said that Tyrone Tracy is a guy that could be replaced. Uh, yes. And a lot of there was a lot of pushback. A lot of people love Tyrone Tracy, and I get it, man. The young guys, we talk about it, whatever. You and I, we talked about Tyrone Tracy too. But I guess apparently over the last couple of weeks, you know, I've made two videos where I've said Tyrone Tracy's a sell, and people don't like it. So, anyways, Brian Robinson, he's he's worse than Tyrone Tracy in my opinion. They're about equal. Let's move on to the next one here. You got to trade here. Twelve team. Superflex PPR tight end premium start 10. Team number one says they are contending. They get Nico Collins and Xavier Leggett. They give up George Kittle, Brees Hall, and Calvin Ridley. So a contending roster moving off of some good contending pieces, Brees, Ridley, and Kittle, but you get Nico. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean... The fact that I don't know probably means that the trade is fair because, but man, 
this the second time I've seen Brees Hall traded this week. So it's kind of like, mm. but he is a running back and he is on the Jets. And he is on the Jets. So, I mean, you know, uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll cautiously take the Nico Collins side, but that's pr- primarily because if, Cal- if that Calvin Ridley was a receiver that I felt like had more run runway in front of him, I will be cool with it. But yeah, I'm going to take side number one, man. I'm going to take the Nico Collins side. Yeah, I th- I think I lean that way as well. Um, it's it's a pretty solid deal, I think, for both yeah. people. I can't really imagine moving off of a guy like George Kittle and Brees in the middle of a contending window. But when you get Nico Collins, you know, I feel like that also kind of makes it worth it. My thought is more so like, who do you have at tight end where George Kittle was expendable? You know, like who who really are we playing over George Kittle at this point in time? Maybe only Brock Bowers. Like, is he the only yeah. guy that we're playing over Kittle at this point? Um, so it makes me wonder who you had. I get wanting to go get the stud, you know, wide receiver because I believe Nico Collins is a top six, top seven type of wide receiver in this league in dynasty fantasy football. And I think he's going to be that for a long time with CJ Stroud. Uh, just quite being honest there. And Leggett, he's a guy who's interesting. I, I still very much view him as like a dart throw option. Um, we don't really know what's going to happen with quarterback pass this year there in Carolina. We don't really know what the offense is going to look like. Obviously, they moved off of Deontay Johnson, which is positive for Leggett. But are they going to bring another guy in this offseason? You know, like there's a lot of question marks about Leggett in this situation in Carolina. And I think at this point with Leggett, I'm having more questions about the situation than I am the player. You know, I wasn't a huge, you know, Xavier Leggett guy coming into the uh, NFL draft. But I think he's shown me enough, actually, that I I actually like what I've seen out of Leggett. He's shown me flashes where, um, I'll just be honest here, and this this probably is going to make some people upset. I like what I've seen out of Xavier Leggett more than, like, guys like Keon Coleman who went ahead of him you know in the in the draft and guys that people were more excited about uh Keon Coleman and things like that so I like Leggett enough from what he's been doing the situation is very very concerning I think for the most part so that's why I view him as a dart throw I would happily give my Calvin Ridley to go get Leggett at this point and then that brings me to Brees Hall versus a uh, Brees Hall and George Kittle versus Nico and I think you can make an argument either way in that part of the deal so uh at the end of the day it makes sense. Maybe this is more so just a team roster construction type of move. You know, sometimes you need to move the running back to get the wide receiver because you're a little bit light at the wide receiver position. That could be mm-hmm. that uh, in this deal. But overall, you know, I, I'm not mad at this deal at all. I think both parties probably get pretty fair compensation. Uh, but I think the best player in the deal is Nico Collins. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that too much. I mean, Xavier Leggett, we were even talking about how the kid that's on the Jets. I don't even remember his name at this point. I moved on. Yeah, like we were talking about, oh yeah, how could you take Leggett over Malachi Corley? And it's like, now it's like, okay, Leggett, he kind of legit. He kind of got a little juice to him. So, I mean, yeah. So, I think the Nico Connor side is probably the winner here. He gets the edge. Yeah, man. I I really liked Malachi's tape. Um, And then... Leggett got that day two draft capital. I guess Leggett, uh, uh, Malachi got it as well, but just a round later. Anyways, uh, Leggett looks pretty solid for the most part. I just don't know who the hell is going to play quarterback next year. Uh, but let's move Game on to two. the next. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll see if he clears waivers. Um, he should clear waivers unless, because if he doesn't clear waivers, I think somebody's taking on that contract and nobody's yeah, taking on that 20 million, yeah, no, no. So we'll see what happens. Um, he could play QB behind Daniel Jones or something. I mean, uh, he could play QB behind Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, Daniel Jones, are they kind of the same guy? I don't know. Uh, let's move on to the next <laughs> trade. You got a 12-team super flex PPR tight end premium start 10. Team number one's a contending roster again. So we got a contending roster buying Christian McCaffrey and Calvin Ridley. They give up Jonathan Taylor, Cedric Tillman, and Devon Vele of the Denver Broncos. Uh, kind of a, a pretty even trade for the most part when you look at it from an assets. You got the running backs, you know, going for each other, the wide receivers going for each other. But where are we at with the value on this type of trade? How do you feel about, you know, buying Chris McCaffrey at this point in time as a contender? Um, I actually like uh, team B, team two side more, to be honest. Um, you're getting Taylor, who is not, absolutely not Christian McCaffrey, but has more career ahead of him than Christian McCaffrey. You're getting Tillman, who looks like he might have some potential and you're getting Vele an old rookie. So I mean um I take that side because I don't know how much I don't know how much more Christian McCaffrey has left in the tank, quite frankly. And Calvin Ridley, you know, he's Calvin Ridley. He he's a decent, you know, probably flex week to week wide receiver. But for the most part, I feel like team two gets more gets okay production now and could potentially get larger production in the future as Christian McCaffrey can continues to age more 
and Ridley as well. So yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting points about this because I actually, you know, we talked about in the last Dynasty trade show. I bought Christian McCaffrey on a contending roster. Um, I didn't pay Jonathan Taylor prices for Christian McCaffrey. I paid uh, JSN prices, which I feel like is probably a little bit cheaper for most people. Um, that being said, though, I like the idea of buying Christian McCaffrey, um, or at least liked the idea of buying Christian McCaffrey when the value was lower, uh, when he hadn't been on the football field yet, and it felt like you could get a guy who could come in and give you 15, 20 points at the running back position for the rest of the way. I think that there's some things that are slightly concerning about San Francisco. Obviously, the record is not what it should be right now. Um, they've been very banged up this year. No Ayuk, no Chris McCaffrey. You know, uh, I think Trent Williams missed a game or two here and there. Like, there's there's been a lot of injury in San Francisco this year. And I think right now we're seeing an injury with Brock Purdy that is a required an MRI on the shoulder, potentially going to play this weekend. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but if he doesn't play, it's got me pretty worried about San Francisco options, the Debo Samuels, the Chris McCaffrey's for the rest of the year, because what's keeping the San Francisco team from, you know, losing another game, falling out of that, that race there in the uh, NFC West, and then potentially packing it up for the year. If they pack it up for the year, I can't imagine they're out there giving Chris McCaffrey 20 carries a game. I just don't know if that's the case. And for me, somebody who did buy Chris McCaffrey, it feels very much like he's a guy that I was only renting for uh, an eight-game stretch. Like, I wanted him for the back half of the year, but once that offseason hit, I was selling his ass like hotcakes. It was not going to be <laughs> something that I kept long because I am worried about Chris McCaffrey long-term. That Achilles tendonitis, it's something that doesn't go away. It won't go away. It'll be there for a while, and it could flare up at any point. The hope was that you buy Christian McCaffrey, he's healthy for an eight-game stretch here in the fantasy football playoffs, you get those points, and then you can move off of him. Maybe people start to forget that he missed some time and they don't realize how serious that Achilles tendonitis could be, and then you can go get back, you know, something decent for Christian McCaffrey. I had already tried shopping him. I, I tried buying and then shopping immediately. I was trying to move him for like Kyron Williams, um, mm -hmm. some younger guys like that at the running back position. Nothing worked. It's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, bro, like I, I just feel like this is a guy that you're probably wanting to rent very short term. And I say that in a long roundabout way to get to the point of I take the Jonathan Taylor and the Cedric Tillman side as well. Yeah, yeah. We have the same concerns because the Achilles, that's not something that goes away. That's something you manage. He'll probably be managing it in one way or another until it's the end of his career. I mean, yeah, you have to. You have to and it has a high re-injury risk. Agreed. You have to pick in a startup draft today. Startup draft. Jonathan Taylor, Chris McCaffrey, they're both on the board. Who you drafting? Obviously, Dynasty, I'm taking Taylor just because. I'm fearful of McCaffrey. I have to agree. I think I would take Jonathan Taylor over Chris McCaffrey in a startup, and that just kind of tells you where you're at. Is there an argument, too, that in a startup draft, you might take Tillman over Ridley right now in a startup draft? I mean, there's no argument. I would take Tillman over Ridley. <laughs> okay, so there's the answer to your question there. I, I kind of feel the same way about those assets. So uh, I understand the swing of going to get Christian McCaffrey because, quite honestly, like, people who are buying Christian McCaffrey at the deadline going into the playoffs, your your swing is you're shooting for the fences and you're trying to win a championship. And I get that. That is what we play for. You know, we don't play to win trades. We play to win championships. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to do. I also want to win some trades on the way there as well. So uh, give me some yeah. Jonathan Taylor and Cedric Tillman here. Yep. Yep. I'm right there with you. All right. Let's move on to this next trade here. I got this trade involving your boy, Caleb. Caleb Williams, 12 team, super flex, PPR, tight end premium, six point passing touchdowns. And it is start 11 now team one they are rebuilding so they give up garrett wilson travis Etienne, and a 2025 20, second they get caleb williams a 2025 20, first and uh i almost said javante williams jameson williams might as well be how we <laughs> how we feeling about acquiring caleb williams in a first round pick in a rebuild okay this is basically this is garrett wilson for caleb williams in the first that's how are we at, are we at that point where we're like throwing <laughs> in the dumpster look the wireless the the running back the one the running back trust meter is is a very short fuse and uh. for me he's already hit the point of you know just a guy he's just a guy to me you could do you, you could do you could do Jameson and ETN like straight up and it'll be like okay, whatever. That's what I was gonna ask. I was gonna say, are we taking Jameson over ETN? Neither of us are huge Jameson Williams guys, but are we taking Jameson over ETN? It's about a fair swap to me. It's about I think a fair I might swap. Do it. Yeah. Damn, I'm gonna go offer that in my league right now where I have Travis ETN. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but right. uh, look, man, overall, I mean, I- I'm just going to jump in here. I-, I would take the Caleb Williams, the Jameson Williams in the first round pick. It's Garrett Wilson to me. He's a, he's a great wide receiver. And I think, you know, a lot of the concerns that some people had, I think us even included, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we might have even said, like, it's not great for Garrett Wilson to get Devontae Adams opposite him. It doesn't seem like it's really mattered. And I think maybe partially, partially some of that is because Aaron Rodgers just hasn't been good in general. And uh, Devontae Adams, maybe not so good anymore i say that with a question mark but maybe not so good anymore maybe father time has kind of caught up to Devonte adams um garrett wilson looks fine man he looks like he's going to be a, a solid wide receiver for a long time the only issue is they're probably moving on from aaron Rodgers next year who's going to be the quarterback i have no damn idea we'll see what happens it's it's concerning in the rebuild six point passing touchdown 12 team league super flex caleb williams is the most valuable asset he's been underwhelming he hasn't been what you've wanted him to be he hasn't lived up to the expectations shout out my guy Flemlow, uh, if you know, you know. Uh, he hasn't lived up to the expectations, but Caleb Williams is still the most valuable asset in this type of format. You're also getting a first round pick thrown in on top of Caleb Williams. I think that's the bread and butter of this deal for me. Uh, throw in JMO too. I'm, I'm going to say I, I'm fairly easily taking the Caleb Williams in the first round pick side. Yeah, I think Caleb is a good buy low right now, there, but there aren't as many stupid people out there that I was hoping for that be that a bell out on Caleb. I'm going to try to acquire him a couple more times and a couple more leagues that I'm in. But but yeah, man, um, it's a good by low time for Caleb because I think I still maintain that Caleb Williams is gonna be fine. Like I think this is just a lot of expectations that just haven't been fulfilled, and we just people are just quick to give up. But I agree with you. That first round pick is absolutely the icing on the cake. That's what made the deal just like go over the top. I mean, if somebody wanted to offer Caleb for Garrett Wilson, super flex. You lean the QB in super flex, but it's close. Yeah, you have to. It's cl- it's closer. It's closer. But that first just blows it out of the water to me. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. I mean, obviously, we don't have the context of where these picks are going to be. I mean, it, it could very well be an early 25 second being moved up to a late 25 first. And, you know, that would make the gap not too big. But uh, yeah. yeah, man, I mean, for me, it's just in super flex, especially 12 team super flex, like in your 10 team leagues where you have super flex, you know, you can get away with, you know, every team kind of has three quarterbacks and and whatnot but in that 12 team man when you got you know 32 or, or 30 rosters in the nfl uh and it's 32 is it 30 or 32 i always mix up them in the nba i think it's 32 okay whatever it is uh, this is like beginner level material that i should just remember but for some reason my mind just always mixes up the nba and uh the nfl for how many teams there are but you get what i'm saying the, the quarterback yeah. is scarce in that 12 team so when you can get a quarterback like caleb williams and not give one up that's huge bro that's huge to me so in the rebuild give me the qb i still like the the upside of what a guy like caleb Williams can be you get the first round pick you get the wide receiver you swap that for your running back I mean this is classic like rebuild material to me this is like if I'm giving a grade this is an A plus passing grade from the rebuilding roster in team one yeah full disclosure just to let you guys behind the curtain a little bit when me and Andrew do these shows sometimes like I'll get so I get an idea from the show I'll get so excited I'll sneak off to the side and like offer a trade <laughs> so like Oh, like, especially like, I'm like, okay, let me, let me try to sneak this here. But yeah, man, this, this side, I think this is a pretty easy one. Are we three for, what are we, what's this, the third trade run? Bro, I don't even know. I feel like we've been through four like, five I at feel, this point. I feel, I feel like we've agreed on all of them. I feel like we got a little streak going right now. We got a little streak. We'll see if we can keep it up. But look, to your point of like wanting to go send deals, we get excited to do that. I know that the people watching, they do that as well. Like people will watch this show and they'll be like, oh shit, I got an idea for a trade. I can send in my lead yeah. and people be doing it. That's why these trade shows are so good, man. That's why I love them. Um, and the people love them too. So we'll keep it moving. We got a trade here. Jonathan Taylor back at it. JJ McCarthy back at it. I guess we just have these guys included in trades today. Uh, 10 team, two quarterbacks. So not super flex. You have to start two QBs, PPR and tight end premium. Team number one says that they have three quarterbacks on the roster already. And if I'm remembering from the context, those quarterbacks are Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, and Jared Goff. Uh, so they have those three QBs. They give up. J.J. McCarthy, a 25 first, and Tony Pollard, and they buy Jonathan Taylor, Mike Evans, and a 2025 third. So are you moving your first, I'm assuming obviously they're a contending roster, are you moving your first, J.J. McCarthy and Pollard, to essentially buy Jonathan Taylor and Mike Evans? Because I think you and I are the same. We don't care what that third is. We don't care. Yeah, no, and I'm going to have to go with the J.J. McCarthy side again, because once again, just like the previous trade, that first changes everything. Like, J.T., he's a, he's a good running back. He's not just a running back. He's a good running back. But he's also a running back that's, you know, 
up there, like as far as like near the running back cliff or at the running back cliff. And then Mike Evans, of course, we know very consistent year to year, but also, you know, probably okay. closer to the end of begin than the beginning. That third doesn't matter. So really it's like JJ McCarthy in the first for Taylor and Mike Evans in a league where you have to start two quarterbacks. So with all that said, I'm gonna have to lean with Teen B on this. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean the fact that they have Mahomes, Goff, and Baker, you probably feel comfortable with that. Um, it's just interesting, man, because I, I look at this and I'm like, Mike Evans for a 2025 first is kind of how I would break that. And I would say you probably at this point lean in a 10 man league. You might lean that 2025 first, but it's close enough that I can just tr- probably cross them both off as fair. Um, and then it's J.J. McCarthy and Tony Pollard for Jonathan Taylor. And I think that that's a interesting question. For me, I, I think this is probably a fair trade. I don't think it's lopsided. I don't think that there's uh, you know a ton of value going one way or the other. This to me feels very much like team need. So, yeah. hey, if you felt like J.J. McCarthy was the expendable asset of your quarterback room and this got the deal done, this got the deal done. Um, I think having Jonathan Taylor and Mike Evans and Mahomes and Goff and Baker and whoever else you have on the roster probably makes you a strong contender this year. And if you go win a championship, you win a championship. I'm not too worried about Tony Pollard. Um, he's a guy that you know is very much just uh, I think probably a one or two year window type of guy. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, it's it's just for me. I I think it's probably a fair deal. I understand the deal, and I think I'm going to take the side of sleeper team one getting Mike Evans and Jonathan Taylor. So I guess we are breaking our streak here of agreeing. Breaking the um, streak. But I only agree with it because of the context. I think if we didn't have context, I would lean the first in the in the McCarthy side uh, in a bubble. But because we have the context, it makes sense to me to take that side of the deal. I think both teams are probably getting what they what they want out of the deal. It looks like team one wanted to get some more production this season, and they got it in this deal. Another team is probably just trying to get some future assets so it works out yep totally agree i i think that there's a very good chance i mean i've said it before and i i hate i i hope the people know that you know i hate actually pumping up minnesota vikings options because i don't want it to ever seem like i'm just pumping them up because i'm a fan of the team because you know i'll i'll sit here and i'll talk about a guy that I don't believe in. I was not talking about Alexander Madison last year. I did not like Alexander Madison. Um, I, I truly do believe that J.J. McCarthy is probably the single best buy at quarterback right now for any rebuilding roster period. Like there is really not a better quarterback. And a lot of people are going to say, well, Michael Penix, what about Michael Penix? You could probably get him for cheaper than JJ McCarthy. I don't think Michael Penix one is going to see the football field as soon as JJ McCarthy. And I don't think that Michael Penix is as talented as JJ McCarthy. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I just, when I, before they were even drafted, before McCarthy was going to the Minnesota Vikings, I had McCarthy ahead of Penix in my rankings. I had Bo Nix ahead of Penix in my rankings. So, you know, it is what it is. I I just think JJ McCarthy for rebuilders, he is the best buy. So I guess it's a little tiny PSA for me if you are or from me if you are not past your trade deadline if your league does not have a trade deadline and you are a rebuilding roster and it's looking like you are trying to blow it up going into next year go check the temperature on jj mccarthy because i think that there's a lot of quarterbacks i would move for him um i tried moving baker mayfield for jj mccarthy in a rebuild straight up one for one Uh, a lot of people would probably say they prefer baker mayfield to jj i think they're very similar assets and and jj mccarthy helps you accomplish the rebuild um there's a lot of there's a lot of players that i would i would move for jj mccarthy but Again, I get it. The optics probably look like I'm a fan, but I think he's the best buy at the quarterback position at the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I even so, got one share of J.J. McCarthy. Sometimes I forget he's even on the team. <laughs> bro, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's like it's people were so high on J.J. McCarthy right after he got drafted to Minnesota, and then the meniscus tear and then him not playing on the football field this year. Everybody's, like, forgotten that he was, like, a top 12 pick and ended up going to, like, probably – I know a lot of people kept saying Chicago, the best situation for a rookie quarterback. I think Minnesota – is the best situation for a rookie quarterback yeah because of the coach coach and and the offensive line having those tackles there is way better yeah yeah um so anyways plus also you got justin fucking jefferson let's just be honest yeah let's go to this next trade here you got a killer and we'll just call him bl uh bl <laughs> with a 10 team super flex half ppr and tight end premium killer says he's very deep at wide receiver and he needed tight end production so he gets brock bowers eric all and a 2025 first he gives up jackson smith and jigba tj hawkinson jk dobbins and ricky pearsall so he's giving up a ton says he's deep at wide receiver he gets brock bowers who is by far i think everybody can say unanimously tight end one in dynasty it's not even close um is this worth it in a tight end premium but nessa we gonna call you kill him because you killed him <laughs> 
Killer is a killer. He killed them in his trade. I'm sorry. You're getting Brock Bowers and a first and a first and all you giving up. Okay, look, I like JSN. Look, look, okay, let me go one by one. I like TJ Hawkinson. He's cool. Yep. Dobbins, he's cool, but we know he didn't have injuries. He's an older running back. This is a one to two year, probably more likely a one year thing. Just JSN is on the rise. He's popping off, but he ain't popping off like Brock Bowers and Ricky Pierce saw. He's, he's a young wide receiver. I'm taking team A killer 10 all day, all day long. There's no question to it. He He's getting one of the top fantasy assets right now. Not just in the tight end position, but of all positions, period. Brock Bowers is an absolute beast. I have him in like five leagues. No, I don't. I'm lying. I have him in like three leagues. But I have him in like three leagues, and he's getting the first round pick, man. I'm sorry. I know you're going to have something to say, but I'm taking kill on this one, man. It's not even a question to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look at this side of the deal and say like, okay, if it was just Brock Bowers, how many of these assets would I give him to get Brock Bowers? You would easily give TJ Hawkinson, J.K. Dobbins, and Ricky Pierce all. You would give all three of those just to go get Brock, right? I'll give TJ Hawkinson and JSN just to get Brock. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. And then you get the 25 first. It feels it feels like the value's there. I think one thing that is interesting to me is I'm, I'm trying to, you know, take in the context. He says he's deep at wide receivers. This this feels like a team that had assets that they could, ex- you know, were expendable. They could give up some assets to go get a superstar. Uh, this is consolidation at its finest. You get the first mm-hmm. round pick too, which makes it, you know, a little bit liquid. It's only going to gain value over time. You can move the first for another player. Um, Eric, all to me, he is so unimportant in this deal that it doesn't matter. I like getting him thrown in as a little tiny piece because I do like Eric all. Uh, but overall, man, I, I, I think I agree with you. I'd like to see the rosters because I don't hate, you know, the compensation being received for Brock Bowers. Although a guy like Dobbins is probably not what I'm wanting because that feels very short window. Um, but JSN in a half PPR, probably his upside's a little bit worse. Ricky Pearsall, I like Ricky a lot, but it's not great. I mean, obviously a lot of it is what he can't control with what he dealt with right before the season started. Um, but Juwan Jennings working ahead of him this year is a little bit discouraging, I think. It's not something I'm worried about long term. But then you got to remember the fact that Ayuk is still going to be on the roster next year. Maybe Debo will be on this roster next year. Maybe not. Kittle will be on this roster still. There's a lot of mouths to feed in, in San Francisco. And Ricky is probably not going to be a superstar i hope he proves me wrong because i love ricky pierce all but uh that being said man i'm just looking at it like the only i think the only superstar that i know is a superstar i think uh, and i'm i'm really discrediting tj hawkinson tj hawkinson is a damn good tight end but i know i know that brock bowers is a superstar just based off of what i've seen like I know he's a superstar. Jason's shown flashes. He's inconsistent as hell, though. Um, We'll see, man. I, I think I agree with you. You get the stud in, in Bowers. I'm going to lean that side, maybe just because the first-round pick is thrown in. But I, I'm not going to say that I... I think it's a finesse. I, I don't hate the compensation for being Let me ask so well. you this. Let me ask you this. All right. If you replace Brock Bowers with Jamar Chase, how would you feel about this trade? I take Jamar in the first. If you replace J- him with JJ, how would, would you, and I and I'm saying how would you feel? I know you'll take that side. I'm talking about would you think it's a finesse? Yeah, are you saying that Brock Bowers is the equivalent of Jamar Chase? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I've seen enough 30, 30 high 20s and 30 point games to confidently say that we are looking at a J- generational we're looking at the new travis kelsey like <laughs> so but young I, that's i hear you and i i somewhat agree but i i keep going back my mind keeps going back to like startup and i'm like i don't think anybody's taking brock bowers in the first round of a startup do you andrew they should because you know why andrew he's doing it with gardner Minshew as his quarterback <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, and then I'm pretty sure they could get Daniel Jones to be their quarterback next season, and that will improve Brock Bauer. Because at least yeah. I think Daniel Jones better than Gardner Minshew. But imagine what he's gonna be if this is a star. Imagine what he's gonna be next season with an actual quarterback playing there. I, I truly believe that the next quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders is currently playing in Colorado. I, I think that is the next quarterback. I think his name is Shadur Sanders, and I think he is going to be the quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders. I so you truly think the coach believe of the it. Las Vegas Raiders is going to be Deion Sanders. That, that, that's what you're telling me. That's what you're telling me. Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't really believe. Uh, I know there's the narrative that a lot of people believe that 
you know, Shader is going to go wherever Dion goes. To, like, they're going to be a package deal. I don't believe that. It would probably be cool if it could happen. I mean, that would be the, I think that would be best case scenario for Shader in Dynasty Leagues because you know he's never getting his ass benched and you know he's going to be put in a situation where he's going to succeed. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I think Shader is going to be the quarterback and I think Shader would be really good with Brock Bauer. So I, I, I hear you and I agree with you. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, I, I did, even before your argument, choose the Bowers in the first side. So I guess I'm still there. I'm I still want there. you to say it's a finesse, damn it. <laughs> Fair enough. I I'm not I'm not with you on the point of, of putting Bowers and Chase back to back in startup drafts yet. But maybe I maybe I'm wrong. I'm fully aware that I could be wrong at this point. And, and Father Time could, you know, a year from now, time could tell me I'm wrong again. And so we'll see. I have Brock Bowers carrying entire roster rosters that are not good for me. I have Brock Bowers carrying them towards the playoffs this season. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let's move on to this next one, man. We got a trade here from Optic. Uh, 12 team super flex tiered PPR. So tiered PPR for people who are not aware. I'm sure I'm sure most people are aware. It's half point per reception for the running back, a full point for the wide receiver, and then 1.5 for the tight end. So it just kind of premiums all of those on the way up. Uh, it's start 10 as well. Optic said they are rebuilding. So in a rebuild, Optic is trading away Caleb Williams and James Connor. And a 2025 fourth, they get back Dak Prescott, Isaiah Pacheco, a 2025 first, and a 2025 third. Um, how are we feeling? I don't understand his rebuild strategy, but I kind of reluctantly take his side. I don't think that's rebuilding, though. You're getting back Dak, a running back in a first, but giving up Caleb. But um, I do kind of take that side, I guess. I mean, I don't want to, but... <laughs> But I mean, I see, I think a lot of people hate on Dak. I think Dak has a lot of years left in him of, of solid production. I agree. I can almost guarantee that more, even though I said Caleb's going to be fine, Dak is almost a sure thing to have solid production for like at least the next three to five years. Pacheco at least got two years in him until the Chiefs decide they want to bring a new running back in there. And then you're getting the first and then you're getting the third. James Conner, he's been on on benching a, a benching watch for for like the last three years to me but he just keep defying time but i know eventually he's a ticking time bomb and that fourth i just don't care about it caleb's the only asset i mean i think the question will be let's do your thing let's see a first and dak for caleb that's mm. where i was gonna go i lean caleb i lean caleb on that one so then what does that leave us pacheco and the third for connor and a fourth yeah and a fourth you take the I pacheco mean, in the third yeah yeah so i mean that that's but maybe, maybe maybe it's an even trade i don't know i don't know man i still <laughs> i still stand on my original point though that this man optic is not rebuilding that's not a rebuilding move man yeah okay so i'm i'm <laughs> in the same boat because the value of the trade i don't necessarily have an issue with the value of the trade at all um it's just the fact that it is labeled as a rebuilding roster and you're buying Dak Prescott, you're buying Isaiah Pacheco, and you're selling Caleb Williams. I think that's the part that I'm not a fan of because in my opinion, on a rebuilding roster, I want to hold Caleb Williams. I don't want to sell Caleb Williams on my rebuilding roster. You know, you know what this you know what this reeks of? And I don't want to use the word reek, but that's the word I use. This reeks of a person that has given up on Caleb. <laughs> that's what this reeks of. I feel like I optic has given up on caleb so he's like let me see if somebody wants this guy because this is not really a, a rebuilding move i mean no. you're giving up you're giving up caleb which caleb is still worth more than that first so i mean yeah. so i mean you kind of gave up the best rebuilding asset in this trade yeah I mean, it's, it's not a question it's not a question that caleb is the best rebuilding asset in the trade and again also in a rebuild i'm not buying you know guys like isaiah pacheco I don't care to have an Isaiah Pacheco or on my that. roster in a rebuild. Um, it's it's just interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, I think I think the value's fine. I think you got the right value. But I would just say that Dak would probably be a guy that in the offseason when his value is coming back up a little bit more because people are down on him right now because he's going to miss the rest of the year and the play was a little mm -hmm. bit poor before then. He's a guy that probably doesn't fit your rebuilding roster anyway, so you should probably be trying to move him. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, and, and Pacheco's probably a guy that you probably need to move as well. Um, so I feel like you, you made the deal 
and you got the first round pick back, but you acquired two assets that probably need to be moved as well. So you kind of got to make additional moves here. Um, overall, though, like I said, the value's not off. The value's not fair. I mean, uh, not unfair, but the best asset for a rebuilding roster in this deal to me is Caleb Williams. Um, and I'm, I'm not trading Caleb Williams away in my rebuild. Just my personal preference, I guess, there. And look, man, why you use this depressed picture of Caleb, man? Why you do that? You, you, need, you need to use the picture of Caleb against Jacksonville. Jacksonville, damn it. Use the Caleb picture in Jacksonville when he was screaming, yeah! Use that picture. This is the press to ask Caleb. Look at him. Looking all was, stare, thousand yard stare, deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> this was the uh this was the photo that was saved on my computer because I have all of these photos saved in my in my uh whatever, in my software. And um I think I used this photo when we talked about Caleb Williams was trending down in Dynasty, is his value. And I put this one there because it fit the theme of him like trending down. And I just reused it. I was too lazy to go find a new picture. I just used the same photo again. I wonder what he's thinking there like. God damn it, why did the Bears have to draft me? Well, that's probably said, I, I should have pulled an Eli Manning. <laughs> <laughs> that's the look he has on his face, damn it. Damn, I wish I was in Washington with Cliff Kingsbury right now. <laughs> <laughs> or, or damn it, why did they hire Shane Waldron? Why didn't they just hire Cliff when he was in the building? <laughs> God damn it, whatever. Let's move on to the next trade here. Uh I think this is the last trade of the day. Maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I can't remember. We'll see. Um, t- 10 team, two quarterbacks, PPR, half point uh, tight end premium there. Start 11. Team one is in ninth place. So, you know, not the season that they've wanted. They're probably rebuilding. Now, team one, also again, a team that is not trending in the right direction, buying Isaiah Pacheco and uh, Anthony Richardson. Also a 2025 first and a 2026 first. Now they give up Bo Nix, Jamison Williams, James Cook, and Joshua Palmer. So I guess guess really the question here is probably going to start off with the quarterbacks and then we'll work our way down but there's a lot of valuable assets in this deal being thrown around how are we making sense of this what are we what are we doing here i like bo nix i like james cook but i'm taking team a i'm taking team a because we could t- okay i'm not gonna disrespect jameson Williams by taking him out of trade we could definitely take palmer out the trade i mean he's a roster clogger bro yeah we could definitely just go ahead and put him in a, the 99 cent rack at the dollar store so let's uh um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> 99 cent rack at the dollar store. Um, Pacheco and Cook. I kind of value them similarly. So can we agree that really? we just, yeah, kind of, yeah. Why Why do I, Why did I give that I reaction? Feel, it, what is it I don't know, because I feel like. It makes me feel like he's so much better than Pacheco right now. Because Pacheco has been injured most of the season. Hmm. And his values down right now. Because, I mean, we're talking about age. They're not even that far apart in age, are they? No. Yeah, so I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Pacheco has done pretty well for himself when he's been. Do you do you prefer Cook to Pacheco though? I could give him a slight edge, but if somebody made that trade straight up with Isaiah Pacheco fully healthy, fully healthy, then I I wouldn't necessarily like bemoan it. Like if it was side. something like yeah, if it was something like Pacheco and a third for Cook, then it'd be like okay, that's Pacheco. Okay, that's fine. But I mean the, the the value of those two assets aren't that far off for me. You're right. I mean I I gave you the the crazy reaction. But like you're right, I, I guess maybe I just caught myself being down on Pacheco for no reason because um, he hurt. And that's I, all. Yeah, I mean you saw I did that instantly. I said, wait, why did I just give that reaction? Like, but yeah, you're right. It it's probably Pacheco and Cook are are close enough that you can make the argument long term dynasty value. You know, you view them as equal. You also sense. you also like Cook a lot. You you are known to like James Cook a lot. I do like James Cook. I think he's I think he's a damn good player. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at that. Yeah. I mean, if you want to cancel them out, that's fine. And then we take Palmer out, you know, then we're looking at Anthony Richardson and two first for Bo Nix and Jamison Williams. I still I mean, take a hell of an Anthony argument. Richardson side. I think uh, let, let's break it down a little bit more. What if we did Just JMO for the 26 first and pull that out? Yes. Let's do that. And so it's a rich and a 2025 first for Bo Nix. Yeah. And when you get to that part of it, it's like, you'll be hard pressed to find anybody who really messed with a rich like that. They, they probably a jump at a people are so high on Bo Nix right now. And so low on a rich right now. I feel like people will rush to accept the trade of a rich and the first for Bo Nix. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for good reason though. I mean, what, yeah, what yeah. both of these guys have given us on tape this year has been, I mean, the tale of two different stories, right? Bo Nix looks like, 
like a top 10 guy right now, fantasy football wise, not NFL wise, fantasy football wise. He's been a top 10 guy most of, you know, the last couple months or two months here. Uh, a Rich, he's, I mean, this is a guy who got benched for Joe Flacco for a short period of time. It, hey, but optically, you, you talked me, you talked me back off the ledge for A Rich a little bit. Like you, you, you regain, you talking about A Rich last week and then his performance this past week made me take a couple steps back from the A Rich ledge. It, uh, like, so it aged really well, really quickly. Yeah, it did. It did. It could all go, <laughs> age, it could age again this week, possibly. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, if he has two of those weeks in a row, people going to be trying to get that last minute A Rich trade in. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I'm with you, though. I take A Rich, the first round picks, and Pacheco, especially considering that this team is, is blowing it up. You know, team number one, ninth place, blowing it up. James Cook is not a piece that you're going to hold, you know, long in a rebuild, I don't think. I mean, we talk about the running backs having two year windows, probably. That's probably what James Cook has. Pacheco, you kind of got the same guy. Like you said, you convinced me he's kind of the same guy value wise long term. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think you have more liquid assets on the average side, and it's probably going to offend people because, like you said, the bone. Nick's hive right now is very, very loud. But mm -hmm. if A Rich develops into what we believe he can be, his ceiling is still higher than Bo Nix. The ceiling is still higher. So Bo Nix has been damn good. I'll be honest with you, though. I I'm getting to the point where it's like Bo Nix is a good-ass quarterback. How much more can he improve? I mean, the offense is going to get better around him, so I think they're going to get more efficient on offense. You know, he's not going to have to throw as much as he is, and he's not going to have to run the football as much as he is because he's going to have some better weapons, and they're going to be able to kind of move the sticks a little bit better. But, like, how much better can Bo Nix actually get for fantasy football? I don't think the answer is really that much better um and i think if i'm remembering correctly in our buy sell hold episode last week bonix was a part of that and i said at the moment i'd be holding him if the hype continues to grow he's going to he's going to turn into a sell for me would you trade bonix for caleb williams i would i would be holding out my hope in caleb williams and i think that in itself is going to offend people <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that just struck me like how, like, cause how high is Bo Nix right now? Like, I will tell you, I will tell you, I have seen takes on the internet where mm -hmm. people have suggested trading Caleb Williams for Bo Nix. I have seen those takes on the internet. I'll give you another one. I have seen takes on TV, on TV, that people should trade Bo Nix or Caleb Williams for Drake May in real life. In real life, which, which really, damn, they're the same. In, in, in this, in this argument, damn they're the same thing yeah in in real life i'd love the hell out of drake may i think he's a i think he's a dog but he's a uh, red flower kind of guy i don't know man but yeah this is i mean that's kind of where i'm at it's an interesting you know thought process to trying to go through your mind and say like how high are we going to get on bo nix and there's probably still a small opportunity to buy low on anthony richardson so at the end of the day i think you're right you know the 25 first the 25 or the 26 first anthony richardson pacheco they're probably the same but if team number one is in ninth place and you're rebuilding i'm probably flipping pacheco um probably trying to do that before your deadline just to get another liquid asset and, and keep you know playing towards the future try to get you an early 25 pick if you can second rounder or something so you could take advantage of this running back class coming up i I might do you one even better and say I'd probably go to the Jonathan Brooks manager because Jonathan Brooks now his value is so low. We got to a point where it was so high and now it's moved to now it's so low. I might go to the Jonathan Brooks manager and say, give me Brooks and a second and I'll give you Pacheco. And they might do it. They might do it. So, all right, let's go to this next trade. Uh, I think this is the last one. I know for sure this is the last one uh, because I remember Ashton Ginty was on the on the photo of the last one. Uh, you got a 10 team, two quarterback, full PPR and tight end premium league. The first is projected as the 101. Now, I will say, disclaimer, you and I, we don't like to project teams as 101, but I feel like at this point in the season, you kind of know which teams are bad and which teams are not and where the, the points for are at and where they're not. So if he says it's the 101 and he's trading for it thinking it's the 101, I will review it as if that is the case. So um, I don't think it's going to make too big of a difference in the way that we were reviewing it. That mm -hmm. said, you get Kyler Murray, Darnell Mooney, Ramondre Stevenson, Lad McConkey, and the 101, which I think most people, the majority of people are telling you that this year that 101 is Ashton Jinty. We'll, we'll view it as the 101. Let's not view it as Jinty. I just put them on there for, just for a visual but Kyler Mooney, Stevenson McConkey, and the 101 for Dak Prescott, Jamar Chase, Kyron Williams. Let that sit for a second, and then what are we thinking? I think I'll pick this trade. And 
I don't know why, because it frustrated the hell out of me when I picked it. Um, it's a it's a big trade. There's a lot of assets floating. It is. It is, man. And we definitely gonna have to break this one down because okay. just to like first, just at first glance, it's like okay, what I would do, Kyler and the first for Jamar Chase. That's I would. The one though. It is. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Would you Would you go Kyler and McConkey for Chase? Kyler and McConkey for Chase. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's let's break that out. Now you got the one hundred and one Stevenson and Mooney for Dak and Kyler. Yeah, Kyler. That, at that at that point, team one, team one just wins. <laughs> Team one just wins at that point, man. We're we're talking about Kyler and McConkey for Chase is a wash. We're talking about Dak and Kyron from Mooney Stevenson and one one. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. If we're gonna break it down like that, I'm I'm just sitting here looking at it, bro. And it's difficult. It's it is difficult. I kinda... I almost feel like we have to have both of the quarterbacks in the breakdown. I feel like they have to yeah, be in the breakdown well, together. I almost feel like I think the fact that 2025. 101 is most likely Ash and Jinty. That's like lessening the 101. Like that's not the same 101 as other years to me. That's like a lesser 101. Like if the yeah. 101 was last year's 101 where I was getting Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. If you wanted to pick one of those two guys. Yeah. I feel better about that than Ash and GNT. Or even if you go it's back to the running years, back. It's because it's a running back. And and everything outside of that is very top heavy. I mean, you got Ted McMillan, you got Shader Sanders, you got Cam Ward, you got some of these other guys, but it's very top heavy. And um I just don't believe right now, I mean, everybody loves Ash and GNT and and rightfully so. He's been going nuclear. I mean, we have never do, seen we have never seen a running feel, back like this. Do you feel better about him than you did about Bijan when Bijan went one one? In, in dynasty drafts. I was more excited about B. John Robinson than I am going to be about Ash and GT, I think. Because B. John's kind of in that same ilk as like Saquon, right? You're thinking about him in those same type of like terms, right? That's how I was thinking about him, yeah. But you don't think about GT in those terms. No. Okay, so I think with that as a part of it, then... I think I lean the DAC, the, the Jamar Chase, and the Kyron side. I think I'm leaning that way. <sighs> it's tough because there's a lot of useful assets on that on that other side there's a I lot agree. of ah, it's bro. probably a fair it's probably a fair deal <laughs> it's probably it, usually the rule of thumb is if we feel like this about it, it's probably a fair deal it probably is. I mean, when I'm looking at these assets, right, and I'm like, okay, it's Kyler Murray or Dak Prescott. I'm taking Kyler Murray, you know, moving forward. Yes. You could give me you could give me Darnell Mooney and Ramondre Stevenson for Kyron Williams, and I'm still taking the Kyron Williams side though. Um yeah, yeah. and then it's Lad McConkey in the one oh one for Jamar Chase. That's a hell of an offer. Yes, I'm taking Chase. I think I take Chase. So the only place where we really give the edge, bro, is the quarterback. So is the quarterback that important? It is two quarterback, not super flex, it's two quarterback. Is the quarterback up Great to Kyler Murray that important that you're losing Jamar Chase and Kyron Williams? I mean, yeah, kind of. That's why I said this kind of is starting to seem more like a fair deal the more we talk through it. Because I feel mm -hmm. like that Kyron for Dak side, there's a significant gap there. I will I will say if if there was anybody anywhere where rookie fever got to a point this offseason, which maybe that's part of the deal here. But if it got to a point anytime, anywhere where Rookie Fever got to where somebody was willing to give me Jamar Chase for my 101, if I had a 101 anywhere, I'm doing that so quickly, I'm probably breaking the fucking screen on my phone. Yes. It's it's not even remotely close. Uh, let me ask you, you this. You better bro. believe I'm doing that in our league. You better believe it. <laughs> let me ask you this, bro. Where do we go with the 101? I think this is more of a conversation. I think we've kind of come to the conclusion that this is there's a good enough argument for both sides that this can probably be deemed fair but i just kind of want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation here uh it's obviously very early to be having one-on-one -on -one conversations but when you're thinking of moving that one-on-one -on -one, right now assuming it's ashton gnt uh, and that's obviously assuming the fact that he gets first round draft capital and things like that because i don't think if he gets first round if he doesn't get first round draft capital i don't think he's the one-on-one -on -one. okay I could, I could see that i think shader would pass him as the one-on-one -on -one if he doesn't get first round draft capital because i think shader is going to go round one and so that's just my thought but one-on-one -on -one right now or marvin harrison marvin harrison that's still believe in Marvin Harrison a lot. 101 right now or Garrett Wilson? Probably Garrett Wilson. Even I don't know that. I don't trust that. Uh, you just want the dice 101? Yeah, because I don't think Aaron Rodgers, at this point from all the stuff we're hearing, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be there next season. 101 or Puka Nakua? I think Puka Nakua is probably a safer bet, even though, once again,
again, Matthew Stafford, like how long is he going to be there? Yeah, 101. I'm going to go to the quarterback position now. 101 in this year's class or Drake May? I want to say 101. But you're thinking Drake May, huh? Yeah, but I'm thinking Drake May. I'm thinking 101 Drake or Bo Nix? 101. Bro, that's what I'm telling you. This is crazy. The fact that like the 101 this year is worth like the 106, 107, 108 last year, almost in our 101 or Romo Dunze. I'm rolling with Rome, baby. I'm rolling with Rock. Look, uh, look. I'm, I Look, thought that was a little bit crazy to say it, but I'm going. I'm going the one on one there. Pretty. I, I think. I'm, I'm I'm, I, I, I have a. I have a lot of belief in Rome. Not just because of the. You got a lot of belief in Rome. I do. So I mean. So I'm, I noticed that you didn't even mention Caleb. Is that a no brainer to you? Yeah, I mean, Caleb was my one on one last year, and I'm. It, you put him in a weaker class here. He's still my one on one. And I didn't want to talk about Jaden Daniels because I moved Jaden over Caleb he's in my in rankings. A, yeah, he's in a different tier. He he's in a what one on one and what else can you give? me for for Jaden day like yeah that's the trip he's in so so i would go yeah i mean i, I think at this point it's funny because it's like this year's 101 i would roll that for for last year's 104 105 like those types of guys i would probably take those 104s and 105s over this year's 101 and that kind of just shows you where the class is at and i think a lot of that is because this class is weak at quarterback and last year's was strong at quarterback and in super flex obviously the quarterback position dictates pretty much how we feel about the class as a whole also you had three really strong wide receivers in last year's class where this year we probably have one two wide receivers that we feel very confident in yeah yeah and this year's wide receiver one, Ted McMillan, would be wide receiver four or five in last year's class. He would have been the Brian Thomas Jr. tier. Damn. So wait to 2026 is what you're saying. I'm I'm just saying how but I you know, how I currently feel about the class. Now there's a lot of stuff that can change this. And I yeah, can you know, film and I can start watching a lot of the film and, and making some opinions and stuff like that and start feeling more comfortable about the class. But right now, today, there's a lot of players in last year's class that I'm taking over the top players at the positions in this year's class. But you know there's gonna be some guy that, that's barely getting getting pressed right now that's gonna be a stud wide receiver out of next year's class that we just haven't found yet. But yeah, a Puka type guy, you're right. There's gonna to be a guy like that every year but i just thought that was a fun conversation to dive into the class because we kind of are getting to off season so we can kind of start talking rookies a little bit more um but that being said man i think that's it uh that is the last trade of this video um for those of you at home folks if you want to submit trades uh you don't have a trade deadline or whatever it may be we're doing this bi-weekly so you know every two weeks we do this show go submit those trades in the discord i promise you there's a good chance that your trades get reviewed there's lots of people in there but we're doing this show so often that you know it's a matter of time before you get a trade review just go put something juicy in there for us it is free linked in the description uh, it'll also be linked in the comments section as well uh, so go make sure you go look at that free discord and hop up in there and if you have any questions uh war is now actually in the discord as well so you can ask me questions you can ask war questions you can ask anybody questions in there man there's 250 plus people all want to talk fantasy football so go join that uh, also make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you did like today's video hit the like button for us as well that's the best free way to show us some support and last but not least war where can they find you for some additional content? Crimson Mass Pro Wrestling. That's where we are. If you like wrestling, check us out. If you don't like wrestling, check us out just because. And that's it, man. That's it. So there you have it, folks. Uh, nothing else for you today. I will see you guys tomorrow for our live start sit before the game start. Uh, but until then, peace out.